Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back, welcome to Boston everybody. Stu and I are going to do a little riff on uh, this week in, uh, in CUBE land. And uh, we're here at the Chief Data Officer Summit uh, at IBM, uh, hashtag IBM CDO. Uh, we, got we got a crowd chat going on, Stu, I believe. Uh, Crowdchat.net slash IBM CDO. Yep. Uh, CDO Summit? No. D CDO, I IBM, IBM CDO. CDO. Nice okay, and simple. Great. Thank you. And uh, Bert Lattimore is manning that. He's just sort of documenting what's being done uh, on theCUBE, so thank you, Bert, for doing that. Uh, so, Stu, um, we're going to take a little break from the CDO conversation. We'll come back to it, but there are three things sort of that we've been covered, uh, covering this week. Uh, of course, uh, we were at, you and I were at IBM Edge on Monday and Tuesday, while our colleagues on the West Coast, uh, <laughs> including Greg, who's now here, were doing Oracle Open World on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I want to talk about that, and of course, we're, we're wrapping up the week here. So at Edge, you know, it was interesting. Edge is an infrastructure show. We certainly heard IBM plugging its infrastructure story into Cognitive, and so it's fitting that we're punctuating the week with uh, an event around Chief Data Officer and Cognitive and, and Analytics. Um, and so, you know, in thinking about Edge, let's sort of start there, IBM's kind of created three businesses for its systems division, the, the, the mainframe Z business, the power and the open power business, kind of call that the second one, and then of course the storage business. You got Z sort of managing the, 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 the decline of that business, and it's, it's been in sort of flat to decline mode. Sometimes it grows when it's a product cycle. For years, you seem to be doing a good job there. It also drives a lot of other IBM software and services business. The power is an exciting story, opening up that ecosystem. You know, we talked about the China angle, we can talk about that some more, and then storage doing the software defined thing. So that's all sort of pretty clear. There's some gaps. We talked about the gaps and hyperconverged and the like. And then contrast that with Oracle, you know, who's got this vertically integrated approach. Uh, the, both companies are chasing value, not volume. But Larry Ellison this week said, you know, look out Amazon, here I come. What, what do you make about, of that statement? I mean, he didn't say that exactly, but basically saying, we're going to bomb prices and infrastructure as a service. Amazon's got a new competitor. We're going to take those guys on. We're going to be 20% less expensive, 10 times faster, five times better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What are people saying about that? What's your take on that? Yeah, so, so Dave, I mean, we, we've seen this message from Oracle before. Uh, you did an event last year, I think, where it was like infrastructure. We're going to be, you know, 50% less expensive than, you know, Cisco, EMC, kind of going after, you know, the VC EV block. You know, market leader in the space, just like Amazon, market leader in the space, you know, $10 billion worth of revenue in the space. Uh, the last quarter, uh, I think cloud revenue, I, I think was what, 150, 200 million dollars from Oracle. So obviously they're a small player, but you know, up, you know, we're going to be the cheapest and we're better and we've got a 20 year lead on database. I'm like, look, number one, Oracle has the stickiest application in enterprise uh, and they are doing a good job at switching a lot of their applications over to Sassify them over to cloud. Um, but if we're talking, you know, infrastructure as a service, uh, it's not just the you know price per CPU, you know price per gigabyte out there. Amazon has built you know you know we, we talked. Is there a standard in the cloud? The line we had is yes. There's a standard out there. It's called Amazon. <laughs> you know everybody writes to you know uh, AWS S3. If you're not compatible with that, what are you doing? Because that's where the customers are. Um, the customer is such Amazon is such a broad marketplace and ecosystem out there. That's where you know the developers are. That's where you know, so much is happening there, so um, it's a little bit bombastic uh, for uh, Oracle to come out and say, you know, oh, we're just going to, you know, knock them aside uh, over something like price. Yeah, so, um, and, you know, it's interesting, Oracle's really got nothing to lose by, by doing that, by saying that, so of course it's going to, you know, take the bravado road. So that's kind of interesting. One of the things that I want to talk about, Stu, that we learned at this conference, and, and Gene Kolker just mentioned it, was how IBM's global services division is trying to bring cognitive into its business. This was really fascinating to me, and this is what I think everybody's missing about IBM. IBM's a services company has been leading with services, but at the same time, IBM has always had a big R&D investment in technology, particularly in, in software, obviously infrastructure as well. Uh, but 
big, big investments in, in software, generally in cognitive specifically. It seems to me, Stu, I mean, we talk about this all the time, the curves, and if you go on Wikibon, you'll see all the, the discussion we have about what Amazon is doing to the, to the technology provisioning, provisioning compute, storage, and networking, which used to be a very labor-intensive activity, and now Amazon's automating that and they're driving their marginal costs down. IBM, to a, to a certain extent, is trying to replicate that in its services business. Some, it's like the nirvana of services. How do we replicate what we've done? And it's always been very, very difficult because things are so different. And whether or not IBM can pull it off, we'll see, but I, I'm confident that it can do so in certain industries. So what it's doing is it's taking Watson and applying Watson into, let's say, healthcare, for example. It will do the same in financial services. It's doing, it seems to be doing the same in its own services business, what that ostensibly could do for IBM is drive down the marginal cost and allow IBM to be more profitable at volume. I mean, the gross margin of IBM's business is not nearly as big, uh, for example, as, as Microsoft's, despite the fact that IBM has a huge software business, and it's because of the giant services content in IBM's business. You were at, you were at EMC for years. A hardware company like EMC in the enterprise can have 60% gross margins. EMC lived on 60 plus percent gross margins for years. The enterprise storage companies generally you know, can achieve that. PC companies never got close, right? Dell's gross margins before it went private were you know, in the high teens. Uh, and so it's going to be interesting to see if IBM can take the services business and drive a new profitability model by taking its industry expertise, automating with cognitive, many of the functions typically done by humans, uh, Gene called it technology-led and human-assisted, that could be a sort of game changer from a profitability standpoint for IBM. Yeah, Dave, definitely. You, you know, we, we talked before about if you take uh, you know, Dell and Dell plus EMC and Hewlett Packard Enterprise and how little software they have. Doesn't mean they don't have any, but they divested themselves of all of the non-core software piece uh, as opposed to IBM. IBM's got a lot of software in a lot of places, uh, both things they've developed as well as you know, so many acquisitions. I mean, I feel like every single day IBM makes an acquisition. They're such a big company out there. Um, however, unlike Oracle, which is, you know, let's vertically integrate everything and bake it all into one piece, IBM, the services piece means we're going to work with you on our stuff, we're going to work you with other things. At IBM Edge this week, it's like, okay, you want to use Amazon? Great, we've got services to help you do that. Uh, they've got so many places that they can get into a customer and everything from, they can build the platforms for you, they can offer services for you, for you um, and, you know, there's just so many places that IBM can can help your business. Um, you know, they're they're good at the thought leadership and moving people forward. Uh, you know, the, the whole message around cognitive as, as a service uh, seems to be resonating with the customers we're talking to, um, and, and and where things look to be going. So, and and the challenge has always been, you know, profitability at scale. So yeah. we'll we'll be paying close attention to that. Okay. I'm really stoked uh, next week is big, big week for uh, SiliconANGLE Media and, and theCUBE. Um, we've got Splunk.conf, John Furrier is going to be down in Orlando with John Walls covering that event. It's, it's a fantastic event. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that I can't be there, but I'm actually psyched that I'll be in New York with Big Data NYC, get that in a second. But the Splunk.conf is one of the best conferences that we do with theCUBE and, the, and what makes it so great is the, the customers. The customers, uh, bring content, they're passionate. Splunk has done a fantastic job taking this mundane notion of log files and bringing automation to IT, helping with security problems. Uh, it's really, really a, a great conference with some fantastic content. So John Furrier is going to be down there. Uh, that, I believe, is on Monday and Tuesday. Yep. We are running Big Data NYC as part of Data Week in New York City. It, it uh, runs concurrent to Strata. Uh, which is at the Javis Center, will be at 37 Pillars, which is on 37th Street. I joke, it's a, it's a, it's a, a John Furrier or a John Greco seven iron. For me, it's two drivers away from Javits. But it's a short walk, and 37 Pillars is a fantastic location. We have three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no, four days of coverage. Four days uh, at Big Data NYC, let me go through it. So Monday, we start off in the afternoon with NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is a super hot company. They've been doing you know, cool stuff in, in AI and, and, and GPUs. And, and so 
uh, O'Reilly with Strata has added an AI day and deep learning, machine learning day to Strata. So Monday is, is deep learning day. And we are partnering with NVIDIA to, to cover uh, uh, presentations and panels that cover those topics. And it's all about building the next generation of applications. So that's on Monday. And then Monday night, we got a party with uh, NVIDIA, which is going to be awesome. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of big data with CUBE guests, uh, dozens and dozens of practitioners and technologists. And we'll be really focusing on um, the next generation, sort of beyond Hadoop, obviously a lot of talk on Spark, next generation apps. So that's all day Tuesday, Tuesday night, we're doing, in a, uh, two, actually Tuesday afternoon, we're doing a, a mini event within an event uh, with IBM talking about data science and data scientists. And then that evening, we're uh, collaborating with IBM to have a second party uh, at the Mercantile Exchange, which is just across the street and up the block from uh, 37 Pillars. So excited about that. And then Wednesday and Thursday, full day, all day coverage of what's going on at Strata, what innovations we're seeing. Uh, so we'll probably have 40 to 50 interviews we'll be doing on the grounds at the IBM event uh, in the evening. So super excited about that. You won't be there. You'll be, I think, in, uh, what are you? Uh, I've got an analyst event to go. Oh, okay, to great. In yeah. North Carolina? Or? Yep. Yeah, okay, good. So we'll miss you. But Jeff Frick will be there hosting, co-hosting with me, uh, George Gilbert, Peter Burris. Uh, we'll have the whole crew there. So if you're in New York City next week, definitely stop by 37 Pillars. We'll be there from Monday afternoon on and, and would love to see you. So give you the last thought here on IBM CDO event. Yeah, uh, the last thing, I did, Dave, we mentioned it at the IBM Edge show, but uh, you know, kudos to IBM uh, for really so some of the women in tech activities they're doing. It seems the, the panel we had this morning over breakfast was really interesting. Uh, CDOs have you know, a greater percentage of women than kind of tech in general. Uh, they said the- Much the higher, 25%. It's about 25% is, yeah. is I think the, the latest Gartner data on that. Um, it, it's great if you look, we had you know, what, six segments, four of the six. Uh, we have women on, on the program here, so it's always good to see and naturally in the as you said, you know, uh, IBM from the top, uh, you know, ha has the direction. You know, they, they've got, you know, one of the, uh, you know, most important women in tech as uh, as their CEO, uh, and hopefully we'll have her on the program at uh, either the Grace Hopper event or uh, uh, World of Watson. Well, hopefully both. Yeah. Yeah. So Grace Hopper's coming up uh, the second half of October. We got so many events coming up, I can't keep them all in my head. But uh, but that week is sort of Texas week. Uh, we got you and I will be at Dell World, and then I'll be cruising over to uh, Grace Hopper, the Women in Tech event, uh, which we're really super excited about that. We've got our, our uh, fellowship that we're doing uh, with the partnership with the Ground Truth and the Cube. We call it the Tech Truth, and it's all about training the next generation of journalists, um, which is super exciting. We've got three senior fellows, uh, uh, graduate students that are now in the process of, of doing background research. They're going to be covering some key issues on women in tech. Um, equality in terms of, of, of pay, how companies, how, how many startups are doing uh, with regard to hiring women in tech. So we're going to be digging into that and then covering that, obviously, at the Grace Hopper event. So lots coming up this fall. Check out siliconangle.tv for all the upcoming events. Check out wikibon.com for all the research and, uh, and siliconangle.com for all the news. All right, so that's a wrap for this segment. Stu and I will be back Right after this word, this is theCUBE. We're live from IBM's Chief Data Office of Officer Summit in Boston. Be right back. My name is Dave Vellante, and 